Welcome to St. James the Less Online as we celebrate this week, the seventh Sunday of Easter, except in this case, we're going to be celebrating Ascension, which was last Thursday or 40 days after Easter Sunday, as is traditional. It's the day that we celebrate that Jesus ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God. And there are a couple different themes running through our Ascension celebration. But the first and most blatant is that we are glorifying Jesus as taking his rightful place in the heavenly throne room. And in fact, if you look through the Ascension hymns in our hymnal 1982, there are seven different texts. And I think six of them refer to Jesus being a king. The other one refers to him being a ruler, and most of them have some sort of triumph or victory or conquest built into them. So anyway, that's a big one for Ascension. We're going to start with one of those hymns today. This is number 218 in your hymnal 1982, A Hymn of Glory Let Us Sing. We'll do all three verses, and if you don't have your hymnal 1982 handy, no problem. All of the verses of all the hymns will be printed in the description of this video. This one appropriately opens with a fanfare. centers of power in the West, in England and in America. And here is one answer to that question. That tune goes by two names, Deo Gracias and Agincourt. And in fact, it was written by an anonymous melodist to celebrate Henry V's victory at the Battle of Agincourt in France. That's the battle that was depicted in Shakespeare's play, Henry V. And the original words to that tune go like this. Our king went forth to Normandy With grace and might and chivalry There God for him wrought marvelously Wherefore England may call and cry. And then 
there was an extended Deo gracias refrain, um, sort of like that Alleluia refrain that we hear in our hymn. The hymn text is even older than that. It comes to us from the Venerable Bede, the English historian who was writing in, I believe, the 7th century. So we're talking like this hymn is a scroll in the British Museum, right? It's very, very old. And his hymn is an extended meditation on the ascension of Christ. And what I really like about it is that he not only focuses on the glory and majesty of Jesus ascending into heaven, but he indicates um, that this makes a way for us to follow Jesus as well. Uh, we hear it in that text. By a new way none ever trod, Christ takes his place, the throne of God. And that's the second theme. Uh, besides all that pomp and glory that we get in the hymn text, the other theme that we have in Ascension is that his Ascension sort of clears a path for us and gives us new access to God's presence. Uh, there's a hymn, another hymn, that talks about that, and it is number 528 in our hymnal. Lord, you give the great commission. Now, this, the Ascension text at the end of Luke and the beginning of Acts is not exactly the great commission, but we do hear that Jesus has plans for the disciples that he is leaving on earth. At the beginning of Acts, Jesus looks ahead to Pentecost and he tells his disciples, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And then after he ascends, the disciples are all standing around looking up, you know, scratching their heads, uh, and two men dressed in white appear. And they say, men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into the sky? They're sort of sarcastic. This same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go into heaven. And so what they're saying is that you are here on earth, but because Jesus has shown us the Father and has shown us the way to the Father, you can live in a new way here on earth, and you can spread this good news of Jesus. And so that's where this next hymn, Lord, You Give the Great Commission, comes in. It's number 528 in the hymnal. Uh, well, I'm going to sing stanzas 1, 3, and 5. And as I sing, notice where there are echoes of this ascension mystery. I'm also, I'd like to point out the hymn tune I've chosen. You can sing this text to a couple different tunes that are very familiar to us, Hifridol and Abbot's Lee. But I'm going to sing to a different one that we don't often get to sing in church. This uh, text was written by Bishop Jeffrey Rowthorne, one of the bishops of Connecticut, and it was set to a tune that was named after the author. The tune is called Rowthorne, and it was written by Alec Whiten, who was one of the coordinators of our hymnal 1982. Since you don't get to hear it that often in church, um, you get to hear it now. And sing along if you'd like. Stanzas 1, 3, and 5. Lord, you give the great commission, heal the sick and preach the word, lest the church neglect its mission and the gospel go. to your purpose with renewed integrity with the Spirit's gifts empower us for the work of ministry Lord common holy, 
this my body, this my blood, let your priests for earth's true glory daily lift life heavenward, asking that the world around us share your children's liberty with the Spirit's gifts in with words assuring I am with you to the end faith and hope and love restoring may we serve as you intend and amid the cares that claim us hold in mind Eternity with the Spirit's gifts empower us for the work of ministry. I love that. Amid the cares that claim us, hold in mind eternity. The point of these passages is not that heaven is some literal place up in the sky. The point is, firstly, that Jesus is to be glorified with God, and secondly, that his absence invites us to look for God's presence on earth in new ways. And so we hear some of that in our third Ascension hymn today. This is another very kingly, glorious one, but it also has those echoes of how are we supposed to live here on earth? This was written by Charles Wesley, the very prolific hymn writer and founder of Methodism. Uh, and it's been said that if you read through all of Charles Wesley's many hymn texts, you would basically have the Bible there in front of you. He uh, was very prolific depicted many of the events and festivals that we observe from Scripture and also applied those to our life here on earth. Um, so this hymn will be his Ascension text, Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise. It's number 214 in your hymnal 1982. And like many of Wesley's hymns, this has been shortened down from, you know, a long scroll of stanzas into the four that we have today. We're going to sing stanzas one, two, and four, and pay special attention to stanza four. Um, it has been theorized, I don't know if this is true, but that this part of the text was likely inspired or informed by the collect for ascension in the Book of Common Prayer although the older 1662 revision of the Book of Common Prayer. That collect goes like this. Grant, we bese beseech thee, almighty God, that like as we do believe thy only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to have ascended into the heavens, so we may also, in heart and mind, thither ascend, and with him continually dwell, who liveth and reigneth with thee, and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. So, here is Hail the Day That Sees Him Rise. And please sing or hum along. Hail the day that sees him rise. Now the highest heaven, Amen. 
Son of glory in Alleluia. Lord, beyond our mortal sight, Alleluia. Raise our hearts to reach thy height, so much for joining me today and I hope in the week of head, week ahead that God might raise your heart to reach his height. Thank you.